Friday the 5th. We just won't be here. But, <laughs> but if you want to come inside and pray, that's going to be on Friday, July 12th. Just got that text message. Let's stand all over the building. Let's stand all over the building. Let's stand all over the building. Um, anybody ready for the word this morning? Don't fool me now. Anybody ready for the word this morning? Amen. Before, before, we get, before we get into the word this morning, I just got to go Tony, Tony, Tony up in here for a minute. Because on Friday, if the Lord wills and the creek don't rise and he doesn't come back for either one of us, I would have been married. We would have been married, Dr. Diddy and I, for 27 years. Look at your neighbor and say, won't he do it, won't he do it, won't he do it. Amen, amen. <laughs> Amen. So let's get into this word. Let's get. I'm not going to tell that story, but now because you said that, I might tell that story. See, I, I wasn't even going to tell it. I wasn't even going to tell it. I, I'm going to work it into the message, all right? I'm going to work it into the message. I'm going to work it into the message. So listen for the story. See, I wasn't even going to tell it. See? <laughs> this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. And I can do exactly what it says I can do. I'm a believer. I'm not a doubter. I'm a doer and not just a hearer. This is the word of faith for my life. Faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. Comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. And we shall be all the better after having heard God's word. Come on, put a praise on it. Amen. This morning's word comes from the Gospel of Luke chapter 8, verses 1 through 4 and verses 9 and 10. The Gospel of Luke chapter 8, verses 1 through 4 and 9 and 10. The Gospel of Matthew chapter 13, verses 16 and 17. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 16 and 17. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 8, verse 16. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 8, 16. And then back into the Gospel of Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 24 through 26, 31 through 32. And then we're going to loop, loop back around to Luke, chapter 8, verse 1. Amen. So we're going to put it in our gospel blender and read it together as one giant brick of me. Here we go. One, two, three. Let's read. Soon afterwards, along with some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases, among them were Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons, Joanna, the wife of Cusa, Herod's business manager, Susanna, and many others who were contributing from their own resources to support Jesus and his disciples. One day, Jesus told a story in the form of a parable to a large crowd that had gathered from many towns to hear him. His disciples asked him what this parable meant. He replied, you are permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of God, but I use parables to teach the others so that the scriptures might be fulfilled. When they look, they won't really see. When they hear, they won't understand. But blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. My Lord, I tell you the truth. No one lights a lamp and then covers it with a bowl or hides it under a bed. A lamp is placed on a stand where its light can be seen by all who enter the house. Here is another story. Jesus told, the kingdom of heaven is like a farmer who planted good seed in his field. But that night as the workers slept, his enemy came and planted weeds among the wheat, then slipped away. When the crop began to grow and produce grain, the weeds also grew. Here is another illustration Jesus used. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed planted in a field. 
It's the smallest of all seeds, but it becomes the largest of garden plants. It grows into a tree, and birds come and make nests in its branches. Soon afterwards, Jesus began a tour of the nearby towns and villages, preaching and announcing the good news about the kingdom of God. He took his 12 disciples with him. I want y'all to see that soon afterwards, Jesus began a tour of the nearby towns and villages, preaching and announcing the good news about the kingdom of God. I want to talk this morning from the theme, a tour story. Look at somebody say, a tour story. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise as you go to your seats this morning. Eternal God, our Father, we just ask for your anointing, your blessing, your peace, and your power upon this word. Sit David below down there, Lord, and let your spirit stand up in me. God, please don't preach and teach a good word, but preach and teach a word that will do us some good. Let it touch, let it heal, let it deliver. Let it lift the burden, loose the shackle, let it set somebody free. Let it save, let it sanctify, and also let it edify. In the name of the Lord Jesus, somebody holler, amen. I want to talk this morning from the theme, a tour story, a tour story. You know, the gospel of Matthew, Mark, and Luke are called synoptic gospels. And they're called synoptic gospels because in, in, in general, they tell the same stories, but from different camera lenses. It would kind of be like if we were describing today's worship. You know, Tom in the back would have a different lens from Deke up front. And Deke up front would have a different lens from Greg or one of the brothers on the instruments. We would all tell pretty much the same story. But our angle, how we see things, would be a little bit different. This tour that we're getting ready to talk, a study that Jesus went on is told in the Gospel of Luke chapter 8, the Gospel of Matthew chapter 13, and the gospel of Mark chapter 14, chapter 4. They're all telling the same story, but from different camera lenses. And so this morning, we're going to look at this tour from camera one, from camera two, and from camera three, and figure out what this tour means for us as believers. The Bible says in Luke chapter 8, verse 1, that soon afterwards, and we're wondering, what is this soon afterwards? Soon after Jesus has his feet anointed by this woman with the alabaster box, Soon after that whole episode has played out, Jesus began a tour of the nearby towns and villages. And he went on tour to announce the good news about the kingdom of God. And he did not go on tour alone, but he took with him his 12 disciples along with some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. The Bible says among them was Mary Magdalene from whom he had cast out, somebody say, seven demons. Joanna, the wife of Cusa, who is Herod's business manager, Susanna, and many others who were sowing their own resources to support Jesus' ministry. Now, I've come to tell somebody that Jesus had decided that I've been in one place too long, and he says, it's time for me to take my faith on the road. And I don't know who I'm talking to, but I've come to tell somebody up in the River Palm Bay today that it's time for you and me to take our faith faith on the road. That means that everywhere we go, we take our Jesus with us. Elbow somebody and tell them it's time to go on tour. Because our job, beloved, is to bring the kingdom of God everywhere we go. In other words, if I'm going to be on tour, I must be the same person on tour that I am here on Sunday morning. I've got to be the same person on tour that I am in my house on Sunday night. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 1 and 6, the Lord our God said to us at Horeb, you have stayed long enough at this mountain, break camp and advance. Elbow somebody and tell them it's time for us to go on tour. And I want you to see who Jesus took on tour with him. Look at the road dogs of Jesus. He took his 12 disciples. This was a scraggly bunch of rascals. You have Judas Iscariot who walked around with his sword in his robe all the time so that if he got the chance, he could run through the back of a Roman and put his sword back in his L, in his slump, in his sheath and keep on rolling. You had Matthew the tax collector. You had a bunch of scallywags. Tell somebody scallywags. But Jesus took some scallywags on tour with him. But not only did he have his scallywag disciples, but all of the women listed in Luke chapter 8, verses 2 and 3, had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. One of the things that you and I must accept about touring for the kingdom is, first of all, is that there, are, there is a reality known as evil spirits. 
look at your neighbor and say, there is such a thing as evil spirits. There, there's a movie that says the greatest trick of the devil is to convince you and I that he does not exist. But I need somebody to know that there is a reality known as evil. Tell somebody, I know that's right. So, so, so look at this, look at this. Please understand, beloved, but look at this, look at this. He's, who Jesus has torn with him. And please understand, beloved, that he has a bunch of people who've been delivered from a bunch of stuff on tour with him. Please understand, beloved, that you and I have been delivered from does not disqualify us. The things that you and I have been delivered from does not disqualify us. Let me say that again until somebody says amen. The things that you and I have been delivered from does not disqualify us. Perhaps I'm talking to the wrong crowd. Is there anybody here other than me who's ever been delivered from something? Maybe I'm still asking the wrong question. Is there anybody here who's been delivered from big stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need the big stuff to holler back. I need people who've been, 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 been delivered from big bondage, big breakthroughs. Somebody say, I've been delivered from big stuff. Somebody say, big stuff's in the house. Please understand that what you and I have been delivered from does not disqualify us, but it is what qualifies us. Look at your name and say, I am qualified because of what I've been delivered from. You and I, beloved, are the best evidence of the power of the kingdom of God. Let me say that again. You and I, beloved, are the best evidence of the power of the kingdom of God. Is there anybody here of the big stuff folk that raised their hand who know that the only reason why you and I are free is because of the gracious hand of the almighty God that worked a wonder in our life? I need you to look at your neighbor and say, you are sitting right next to a miracle. Woo! So understand, beloved, that if you're going on tour, you need a transparent posse with you. Tell somebody, say, a transparent posse. Because there are a lot of saints that act like they were born on a holly and going to die on a luya. There are a lot of saints that act like they've never sinned, never been tempted, that they just sing hymns and praise God 24-7, 365. And while that would be nice, tell somebody, that's not my particular story. Is there anybody here who's had some challenges walking this road of faith? Look at your name and say, those are the type of people. I need transparent people to walk with me. I need transparent people to roll with me. I need some folk who woke up in the wrong places. I need some folk who said some of the wrong things. I need some folk who've been in some of the wrong crowds. I need some transparent folk to walk with me because it is our transparency that testifies to the power of God that's working in us. Let the transparent of the Lord say so. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you really knew my story, you put up your church finger and move. Who am I talking to? Say, but after you moved and you thought about how far God has brought me, you come right back and say, roll with me, brother. Roll with me, roll with me, roll with me. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you need to write this down. It's not the fact that you went through, but it's the fact that God got you out. Hello and here's somebody. The Bible says that things that cause people to stumble are going to come. Tell somebody they're going to come. God says, but woe to him by whom they come. So here we go. Here we go. Can we deep dive further in this message? Jesus has a transparent posse. A kingdom posse rolls with Jesus because in him we live, in him we move, and in him we have our very being. Is there anybody here who understands that wherever I go, Jesus comes with me? And beloved, it's time for you and I to stop dumbing down our anointing. If I'm saved on Sunday, I'm still saved on Monday. If I'm filled with the Holy Ghost on Sunday, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost on Monday. So in other words, my job wherever I am is to bring the light of the kingdom to those places. 
And so what you and I need to do is we need to raise up a kingdom posse. Stop hanging in posses where you're the only kingdom person. Y'all don't like me no more. The Bible says Mary Magdalene. And, and you know, the, the Bible doesn't usually give first and last names. It says Mary Magdalene. In other words, if it was today, it would say Mary Magdalene who lives on whatever drive in Palm Bay, Florida. This is who I'm talking about. It says seven demons were driven out of her. And she's rolling with Jesus. She was completely delivered by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. The thing that I love about Mary Magdalene is that she had enough sense to decide. Now that I've been delivered of those seven demons, I am walking with Jesus from here on out. Because the Bible says in Matthew 24, 30, 43 through 45, that when an evil spirit leaves a person, it goes into the desert seeking rest but finding none. Then it says, I'll return to the person I came from. So it returns and finds its former home empty, swept in an order. Then the spirit finds seven other spirits more evil than itself, and they all enter the person and live there. And so the person is worse off before than they are than before they got saved. That will be the experience of this evil generation. But Mary Mary Magdalene decided, that's not going to be my story. Is there anybody here who can say, that's not going to be my story? The stuff that Jesus has gotten out of my life, I refuse to invite it back. I refuse to let it come back. If it's gone, it will stay gone because I'm going to walk closer with Jesus than I've ever walked before. If I'm talking to you, give me a hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mary decided, that would not be my story. Tell somebody, that would not be my story. Likewise, beloved, you and I have to decide that won't be my story. We've got to be like William McDowell say, I've been changed, I've been healed, I've been delivered. I won't go back, can't go back to the way it used to be. The only way for you and I to go from this point on is forward in Jesus Christ. Is there anybody here who's ready to go forward? Somebody shout hallelujah say, let's go forward. Mary Magdalene, seven demons were driven out of her. She was completely delivered by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. I need someone to understand that when God does a work of deliverance, that it is a complete work. Somebody say a complete work. In other words, when God delivers you, tell somebody you're delivered. When God gives you a breakthrough, tell somebody you have broken through. When God gives you a healing, you are healed. When God does a work of healing, it is a complete work. The challenge for you and me is not to go back and reinfect ourselves. Hello in here. That's why you got to roll with the kingdom posse. I've told you this story over and over again, but back when Dr. Diddy and I were youth ministers at another church, uh, there, there was a, a trustee in the ministry who got a healing and deliverance. We had a, a, just a supernatural service one Friday night for the youth and had this evangelist come from, well, it was from Orlando. She came from Orlando, and I mean, God just used her mightily, and, and, and so in the midst of the service, she spoke to this trustee, and this trustee, he, 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 was, he was broke up. He was broke up, and, and she spoke to this trustee. She said, if you begin to walk, the Lord is going to heal you if you begin to walk the Lord is going to heal you and he began to walk and the Lord started healing he I mean literally it was like something out of a movie he went from like barely able to walk to being able to walk there was a guy who was who who was a guy I was here I'm sports trainer and he started he started rubbing his legs and pushing his legs back and and by the time that service was over this man was walking his dream was to be able to fly to California and go to his grandson's graduation He was able to fly to California and go to his grandson's graduation, no walker, no wheelchair, walking under the power of God. Somebody say, but. The church we were serving at at that time, the majority of the leaders in the church did not believe that miracles were for today. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. They did not believe that miracles were for today. So all his other officers did not believe that God performs miracles, even though he had a miracle. Worse than that, his wife did not believe that miracles were for today. So do you know that they talked this man out of his miracle? Yes. And after many risings and settings of the sun, after walking up and down jetways, walking this place and that way, he was back on the walker. 
because he allowed somebody to reinfect his faith. Look at your neighbor and say, beloved, sometimes we have to separate ourselves from people before we separate ourselves from the love of God that is found in Christ Jesus our Lord. What would have happened to this man if he had believed his healing, if he had believed his deliverance, if he had believed his breakthrough, if he had believed the evidence of his own legs and say, maybe it's time for me to get with a new posse that believes like I believe. Look at your neighbor and say, if you believe God, seek out other people who believe God at that level. Y'all not hear me because as anointed as you and I are, we can't continue to fellowship in crowds where we're the only anointed one. I am not saying that you can't go around unanointed people. I am not saying that you can't go around unsaved people. But you need to have a posse of people that fellowship with you, that build you up in the most holy faith so that you can go around unholy people without losing your holiness. The story of Mary Magdalene reminds me of the story of the man in John chapter 9, verses 1 through 3. The man born blind. Remember, as Jesus was walking along, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. And the disciples said, Rabbi, why was this man born blind? Was it because of his own sins or his parents' sins? And Jesus says, it's not because of his sins or his parents' sins. Jesus answered, this happened so that the power of God could be seen in him. Look at your neighbor say, the power of God is about to be seen in me. Somebody say it a little loud. Say, somebody say, the power of God is about to be seen in me. Let me read it out of the NIV. It says, as he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus. But this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. Somebody say, the works of God are about to be displayed in you. This happened so that the works of God might be displayed in his life. Understand, beloved, there are a lot of things that have happened to you and me over time. But please understand that no matter whether they had happened to us because we caused them to happen or whether they happened to us because of the normal vicissitudes of life, I need you to understand that God used them so that his work might be displayed in our lives. Is there anybody here who can lift your hands and declare, God is doing a work on display in my life? Is there anybody here who when you look back just over the first six months of this year, you can see that God has been working in your life? Tell somebody, my mouth doesn't sound like it used to sound. My habits aren't what they used to be. Is there anybody here who can give God the praise because he's been doing a work in your life? Somebody shout hallelujah. Y'all have to come to understand that God has worked it out for all of us to be in this room right now. Y'all don't even understand what I'm, look at your neighbor and say, tell somebody, this is the will of God right here. This is the, listen, we got people from Haiti, we got people from Canada, we got people from all up and down the East Coast, we got people from other countries throughout the world, but God ordained in his sovereign will. That the things that you and I went through would bring us together in this room at this time for a kingdom purpose. Somebody lift your hands and say, work God, work God, work God, work God. Somebody say, work God. Somebody say, work God. Look at your neighbor and say, God is working right now. God is working right now. God, Pastor Josh, I was looking at a post you posted. When God sent you here to this building in 2015, you didn't know he was doing the work through you. But because y'all said yes, we all here right now because God is doing a work. He sent a brother from the South Bronx, South, South Bronx, South Bronx. To open the door so that all of us can walk in here. Look at your neighbor and say, God's doing a work in this place. God's doing a work in this place. Is there anybody here who can testify about the work he's doing in your life? How many God has God done a healing work? How many has God done a financial work? How many has God done a career work? How many of God has done a breakthrough work? Now look around, look around, look around. Say, neighbor, all of our individual works are going to work together as a corporate work. God's getting ready to do something great. If you believe it, shout hallelujah. So look at your neighbor, say keep on moving. 
Tell your neighbor, say, keep on moving. Tell your neighbor, say, keep on moving. This is the part of the sermon where I mess up. In 1995, daughter sitting right there. She came to my house and said, I understand that you like me. But you need to know that we are just friends. I hope that this conversation is not going to hurt our friendship. Am I clear? Y'all know Dr. Danita. And besides that, you have stubby hands. And I can't be married to a man with stubby hands. Somebody say, but work God. Somebody say, but work God. Somebody say, but work God. Year and a half, thank you, thank you Kelly. Year and a half later, God gave me a 20 minute Denzel Washington anointing. For 20 minutes, I knew what it was like to be Denzel Washington. Our pastor at the home church where we came, where we were trained in ministry, he, it was a spring day, he said, hey, we're going to all walk out and greet the people. We're going to all walk outside and greet the people. All the ministers, everybody, we're going to all walk outside and greet the people. And I didn't know that God had given me a 20-minute Denzel Washington anointing. And the ladies, the young ladies started coming out of the church, hey, Reverend Blow. Look, call me, we're going to have Bible study, okay? Next one, walk up. Oh, you're so cute in your little robe. Call me. We're going we, 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 we to go out sometime. I mean, it was just, it was, and, and, and then she, so later on that night, she called me like Michael called King David. <laughs> How the man of God has distinguished himself. <laughs> Parading in front of all the church girls like that. You should be ashamed of yourself. But I have stubby hands. <laughs> but God used that 20 minute Denzel Washington anointing to bring her into a place of agreement. <laughs> Where by the year 1997, July 5th, 1997, at 6.30 p.m., we stood before the man of God and said, I do. 27 years later, three grown sons. Look at somebody say, won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? So to every single brother out there that's trapped in the single, that's trapped in the friend zone, keep on trusting God. I'm in so much trouble, but I promise y'all I'm working into the message. <laughs> no fiesta Jalisco for me today. <laughs> so look at this, look at this, look at The Bible says in Luke chapter 8, verse 3, Joanna, the wife of Cusa, Herod's business manager, Susanna, and many others who were contributing from their own resources to support Jesus and his disciples. There were some underwriters. There were some tour promoters. Joanna, Susanna, and a bunch of other women were given their resources to fund the ministry of Jesus and the disciples. These women were underwriting the tour. Now look at Luke 8 and 3. It says, Joanna, the wife of Cusa, Herod's business manager, Susanna, and many others who were contributing from their own own resources to support Jesus and his disciples. Now, later on in Luke 24 and 10, it says this about Joanna. It says it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and several other women who told the apostles what had happened. By Luke 24 and 10, Joanna's name stands on its own, not because of who her husband is or where her husband works or who her husband works for, but because she is now a witness to the resurrection. Beloved, the things that I love about Jesus is that he gives us a new identity in Christ Jesus. Is there anybody here who can give God a praise because you have a new identity? Tell somebody, I have a new identity in Jesus Christ. 
2 Corinthians 5 and 17 says, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old is gone, the new is here. In the NLT, it says this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life has begun, gone, the new life has begun. I need you to smile at somebody say, new, 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 everything new, 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 everything new, 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 everything new. Is there anybody here who can lift your hands and declare that I am new in Jesus Christ? My identity, our identity is no longer tied to who we were, but it's tied to who we are becoming in Jesus Christ. If you believe it, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Elbow somebody, tell them you're a new creature. The old has passed away. The new has come. Do you want to know, beloved, who can walk with you and go on tour with you in this season? Only those who can handle you walking in your newness. If my newness does not bother you, then you can hang with me. But if my newness disturbs you, then you are not someone who can walk closely with me in this season. Hello in here, somebody. Tell somebody, because I got to be focused in this season. Tell somebody, we got work to do. Anybody look at the headlines on television? Tell somebody, we got work to do. I can't get caught up in what I used to be or who you think I should be. I've got to be about becoming the person that Christ has called me to be. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Look at this. This is going to help somebody. 1 Peter 4 and 4, New Living Translation. It says, of course, your former friends are surprised when you no longer plunge into the flood of wild and destructive things they do. So because you don't do it anymore, they slander you. Look at it in the ESV. It says, with respect to this, they are surprised when you do not join them in the same flood, here's that word, Dr. Danita, of debauchery. Debauchery, tell somebody, that just means nasty sin. And they malign you. Tell somebody, so, mm. but look, look what Jesus said in the, in the Sermon on the Mount. He said, blessed are you when people talk about you. And say all manner of evil about you. Tell somebody that I must be blessed. Tell somebody I must, I must be doing something right. Let, let me push this thing along. I got 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Let me get out of here. Here in Luke chapter 8, verse 1 through 3, the Lord Jesus is hanging out with people that the Father used him to, to deliver. Let me read it again. It says, soon afterwards, having his feet anointed by a certain immoral woman, Jesus began the tour of the nearby towns and villages preaching and announcing the good news about the kingdom of God. He took his 12 disciples with him, along with some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Among them were Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons, Joanna, the wife of Cusa, Herod's business manager, Susanna, and many others who were contributing from their own resources to support Jesus and his disciples. Now, look at this. Jesus is hanging out with people that he delivered. Tell somebody, people that he delivered. Now, I, I don't want y'all to miss that. Jesus is hanging out with people that the Father used him to deliver. Now, in Luke chapter 11, verse 20, Jesus says the following words. He says, if I cast out demons by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has already come. Don't miss this. Jesus is hanging out with people that the Father has used him to deliver. He says in Luke 11 and 20, that if I cast out demons by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has already come. So who is Jesus hanging out with, Maria? Jesus is hanging out with people for whom the kingdom of God has already showed up. Oh, somebody's not going to get this, but I'm praying that you will. I don't mean to pry into anyone's business, but is there anyone here this morning for whom the kingdom of God has already shown up in your life? The kingdom of God is already moving. The kingdom of God has already made ways. The kingdom of God is already starting to be manifested. Now, the Holy Spirit assures us that there is still more to come, but is there one person in the house who can declare that the kingdom of God has shown up in my life. The kingdom of God has knocked on my door. The kingdom of God has sat in my family room. The kingdom of God has rode with me to work. Is there anybody here who can declare I've seen the power of the kingdom of God? If I'm talking to you, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. 
That's why Jesus says in Matthew 16 and 28, he says, some of you standing here or sitting here will not taste death before you experience the power of the kingdom of God. Is there anybody here who knows that he is talking about you, that you are not going to have to wait to die? You have not had to wait to die because you have experienced the power of the kingdom of God. I need to help somebody here who thinks the kingdom of God is a fantasy, who thinks the kingdom of God is a myth. I need everybody who's experienced the power of the kingdom of God to just jump up on your feet for about three seconds and say, he's talking about me. Look at somebody say, look around, look around, look around. 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 Tell somebody, I have experienced the power of the kingdom of God. If I'm talking to you, shout hallelujah. Before you sit down, lift your hands and say, Father, your kingdom come. Your will be done. Say it again. Say, Father, your kingdom come. Your will be done. Say it one more time. Say, Father, your kingdom come. Your will be done in the river as it is in heaven. Give the Lord a praise as you go to your seats. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 4 and 20 that the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but it's a matter of power. Jesus said in Luke chapter 17, 20 through 21, that the kingdom of God is right on the inside of you. And somebody just needs to touch your belly and say, the power of the kingdom is resonant inside of me. You say, oh, thank you, Father. The enemy wants you to deny the power that's inside of you. But I've come to tell you, Jeremiah said, you're going to get gastrointestinal burning if you do this. Jeremiah said, I'm going to try to hold it in. He said, but I couldn't shut it up because it was like, a fire shut up in my bones. Look at your neighbor and say, fire. God wants us to be folk who walk with fire. Look at them and say, fire. Revelation chapter 11 says, I'll give power to my witnesses. And anybody who wants to harm them, fire will come out of their mouth. Look at your neighbor and say, is that time already? That's where we are prophetically. God is looking for some witnesses who walk with power. Somebody say fire. If you speak fantasy, say fuego. Trying to learn a little something for the mobile food drive, you know. <laughs> so Jesus is hanging out with people for whom the kingdom has already come. Look at your name and say, I need to hang with some folk like that. I need to hang out with some folk for whom the kingdom has already come. I need to hang out with folk who when we go out, even when we're going out to do just regular things, we're expecting extraordinary things to manifest. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? That even though I'm just going to Target to pick up some butter and some eggs, I have the expectation that a revival might break out in the dairy aisle. Y'all not hearing me up in here. Even though I'm just going in Walmart to get some dishwashing liquid, I have the expectation that a revival can break out in Walmart. Is there anybody here who knows what I'm talking about? Even though my wife is just making me walk our daily five miles, I'm just believing that somewhere between mile four and mile five that a revival is going to break out. Look at your neighbor and say, hang out with kingdom folk. Yeah. Woo. Somebody say kingdom folk. And understand, beloved, that you and I each and every day will encounter people who have not yet encountered the kingdom. And here's the thing. If we don't have enough support around us, such encounters can cause us to doubt. Here's, the, here's, a, here's our SAT word of the day, Dr. Dina. The efficacy. That's one of my wife's favorite words. Of the kingdom of God. But if you and I hang out with people who by their very existence are evidence of the power of God, 
then we can overcome our doubts and unbeliefs and see the kingdom expand into the lives and territories of new people. Look at somebody say, I am the evidence that the kingdom of God is real. Is there anybody here who survived a lot of stuff? Tell somebody, I'm the evidence that the kingdom of God is real. I'm not the only one who survived homelessness. I'm not the only one who's been fired. I'm not the only one who's had their back up against the wall. Is there anybody here who can say, but through it all, I remembered that the Lord loved me and the Lord cared and he never put more on me than I could bear. He set me up to display the power of the kingdom. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Elbow somebody say, will you be in my posse? Will you be in my posse? Will you be in my posse? Because, because here's the thing, Pastor Josh. Here's the thing in these seven minutes and 17 seconds I have left. Here's the thing, Pastor Joshua. The world has posses. The world doesn't have any, they only have problems when the kingdom people have posses. The world has posses. One of the posses that the world has is what I call itching ear posses. Mm -hmm. Itching ear posses. No matter where you get your news from, it's an itching ear posse. If you watch Fox, it's an itching ear posse. CNN, it's an itching ear posse. Because the Bible says that what they will do is they will put up, they will come, a time is coming when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather them around a number, a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. Somebody say, itching ear posse. That right is wrong and wrong is right. That good is evil and that evil is good. Tell somebody, itching ear posses. Beloved, you got to watch out for itching ear posses. But they're not just itching ear posses. Y'all not going to like this one. But they're also false prophet posses. Look at this, 1 Kings chapter 22, verse 10. Y'all know evil King Ahab of Israel, King Jehoshaphat of Judah. They're dressed in their royal robes, sitting on their thrones at the threshing floor near the gate of Samaria. And the Bible says all of Ahab's prophets, notice it doesn't say the Lord's prophets, all of Ahab's prophets were prophesying there in front of them. One of them, Zedekiah, son of Kenaniah, made some iron horns and proclaimed, this is what the Lord says, with these horns you will gore the Armenians to death. All the other prophets agreed, yes, they said, go up to Ramoth Gilead and be victorious, for the Lord will give the king victory. Meanwhile, the messenger who went to get Micaiah said to him, look, all the prophets, look at this, all the prophets are promising victory for the king. Be sure that you agree with them and promise success. In other words, I know that you have an anointing, and I know that God is telling you something different than from everybody else is saying. But in order to fit in, I need you to say what everybody else is saying. Mm, Y'all missed that. I need you to come into agreement with what everybody else is doing. But Micaiah replied, as surely as the Lord lives, I will say only what the Lord tells me to say. So Micaiah arrived before the king. Ahab asked him, Micaiah, should we go to war against Ramoth Gilead or should we hold back? And I love Micaiah. Micaiah says sarcastically, he says, go and be victorious for the Lord will give you the king the victory. He says the company line. He says it sarcastically. And the king replied sharply. He said, how much, many times must I demand that you speak only the truth to me when you speak for the Lord? Then Micaiah told him. In a now notice he demands that Micaiah have the high standard of speaking the truth to him. But his false prophets, he receives a false word from them. Y'all, are y'all following that? So, so here we go, here we go, here we go. It says, it says, then Micaiah told him, in a vision I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains like a sheep without a shepherd. And the Lord said, their master has been killed. Send them home in peace. Didn't I tell you the king of Israel claimed to Jehoshaphat? He never prophesied anything but trouble for me. Then Micaiah continued, listen to what the Lord says. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne with all the armies of heaven around him on his right and on his left. And the Lord said, who can entice Ahab to go into battle against Ramoth Gilead so he can be killed? There were many suggestions. And finally, a spirit approached the Lord and said, I can do it. How will you do this? The Lord asked. And the spirit replied, I will go out and inspire all of Ahab's prophets to speak lies. You will succeed, said the Lord. Go ahead and do it. Tell your neighbor, don't be sucked into a false prophet lying posse. Beloved, we must be people who speak the truth even when it's not convenient. Even when other people do not want to hear it. What would have happened if Ahab had chosen to listen to Micaiah? And then you have to watch out for your debauchery posse. And this is a posse that's taking over our world right now. 
Genesis chapter 4, verse 4 and 11. It says, before they had gone to bed, all the men from every part of the city of Sodom, both young and old, surrounded the house. They called to Lot, where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us so that we can have sex with them. Lot went outside to meet them and shut the door behind him and said, no, my friends, don't do this wicked thing. I have two daughters who have never slept with a man. Let me bring them out to you and you can do what you like with them. But don't do anything to these men for they are under the protection of my roof. Get out of our way, they replied. This fellow came here as a foreigner and now he wants to play the judge. We'll treat you worse than them. They kept bringing pressure on Lot. Debauchery will bring pressure on you. Anybody felt the pressure of debauchery? And so they kept bringing pressure on Lot and moved forward to break down the door. But the men inside the door reached and pulled Lot back in the house and shut the door. They struck the men who were at the door at the house, young and old, with blindness, so they could not find the door. I need somebody to know that not only do you need to have a kingdom posse around you, but if you have a kingdom posse around you, God will back you up with an angelic posse. Is there anybody here who can thank God that there's no match for the angelic posse that has been assigned to me? And I've come to tell you, if you need to know that you have an angelic posse, then I pray the prayer of 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 17 over you. Father, open up their eyes so they can see. Somebody say, Father, open up my eyes so I can see. Open up my eyes so I can see that I'm not by myself. Open up my eyes that I can see that I do have the victory. I need three or four people to lift your hands and say, Father, open up my eyes so I can see. It may look like you're surrounded, but I need you to know that you are surrounded by the power and presence of the Most High God. Is there anybody here who believes it? I need somebody to lift your hands and say, my hands are up because I'm surrounded. My hands are up because God's got my back. My hands are up because God's got my front. My bands are up because I know that the battle is not mine, but the battle is the Lord. Look around church. Everybody with their hands up is a part of the kingdom posse. Everybody with their hands up is believing God for greater. If you got your hands up, then stand on your feet and declare that I do have the victory. Stand on your feet and declare that I am a winner. Somebody, anybody, everybody, scream. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Shout unto God. Is there anybody here who believes that you have the victory? Then elbow somebody and say, neighbor, let's get ready to go on tour. Find somebody else. Say, neighbor, let's get ready to go on tour. High five three people and say, let's get ready to go on tour. Let's get ready to show people that God is still alive. Let's get ready to show people that it is no secret what God can do, that what he's done for others, he will surely do for you. Let's get ready to show some people that God is a way maker, that God is a miracle worker, that God is a promise keeper, that God is a light in the darkness. Is there anybody here? Here, who's ready to expand your posse look at your neighbor and say we're going to expand our posse we're going to expand our posse tell somebody our posse is not big enough our posse is not big enough our posse is not big enough but is there anybody here who believes that if two of us on earth agree about anything then that very thing will be done by our Father who is in heaven. Is there anybody here who believes that one can chase a thousand? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, by myself, I can chase a thousand. But tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, if we form a posse, if we form a posse, we can chase every demon out of Palm Bay. We can chase every demon out of Brevard. We can chase every demon out of the Sunshine State. Is there anybody here who believes it? Lift your hands and say, Father, let your kingdom flow through my posse and me. Say it again. Say, Father, let your kingdom flow through my posse and me. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the miracles, the signs, the wonders, 
that God works through you the miracles, the signs, the wonders that God works through me is so that we can bring people into the kingdom. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, if he did it for you, he can do it for me. If he did it for us, he can do it for somebody else. Is there anybody here who's ready to hang with Jesus? Is there anybody here who's ready to hang with Jesus? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, let's hang, let's hang, let's hang, let's hang, let's hang with Jesus. Somebody, anybody, everybody, scream. Somebody hold your hand up like this. Like you're holding up your police driver's license. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, guess what? You and I, we've got our permit. Look at your neighbor and say, what? Say, yes, we got our permit. Because Matthew chapter 13, verse 11 says, we are permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom. Look at your neighbor and say, I got my permit. I got my permit. I got my permit. Are there any permit holders in the house? Are there any permit holders in the house? Hold up your permit. Hold up your permit. Hold up your permit. And say you have been permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of God. Somebody, anybody, everybody, scream. Can you scream one more time? Can you scream one more time? Can you scream one last time? Bring down the lights for me. Bring down the lights for me. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, as a kingdom posse, we are light spreaders. Tell your neighbor, as a kingdom posse, we are light spreaders. Somebody throw your light on. Somebody throw your light on. Somebody throw your light on. Throw your light on. DJ, move into position. Throw your light on. 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 Look at your neighbor. Say, everywhere I go, I bring light. Everywhere I go, I bring light. I'm on a tour to bring light in the darkness. Understand that darkness cannot extinguish light, but light always extinguishes darkness. Throw your light in the air. 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 Light it up. 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 Look at your neighbor and say, we are light spreaders. We are on tour to bring light. Wherever we go, we bring light. Every circumstance, every situation, we bring light. Somebody say, light it up in my soul. Light it up in my soul. Light it up in my soul. Shout yes, shout yes, shout yes. And the Bible says, hold up your light. Nobody takes their light and puts it under a bowl. You don't take your light and put it under a bowl because you can't see it there. No one lights a lamp and covers it with a bowl or hides it under a bed 
a light is placed on a stand. Look at somebody say, you are that stand. You got to stand for the light. Are there any light standers in the house? Somebody declare, I stand on the light. I stand in the light. I stand for the light. A lamp is placed on a stand where its light can be seen by all who enter the house. Somebody, anybody, everybody, light it up. Light it Hallelujah. Up. Light it up. Tell somebody, say, neighbor, I'm on the light tour. You know what? Tomorrow, leave the flashlight on your phone wherever you go let me tell you what's going to happen because i often leave mine on if you go into the Publix with your light on somebody's gonna walk up to your deacon and say excuse me sir your light is on and you know what you can say you are right my light is on but not this natural light but the light of the son of god do you want to walk in the light as Jesus is light, leave your light on at your desk. Leave your light on at the target. Leave your light on at the frat meeting. Leave your light on and somebody's going to ask you about the light and tell them, I'm on a light tour. 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 Look at your neighbor and tell three people, I'm on a light tour. 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 We're on a light tour. We're on a light tour. We're on a light tour. Woo! Give the Lord a hand of praise. Because how many of you know that Jesus is the light of lights? Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Now scream. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever walks in me will never walk in darkness. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Beloved, in this season, let's be light. Elbow somebody say, let's be light. We go to dinner tonight. Leave your flashlight on. Because somebody's going to ask you, somebody's going to tell you, do you know that your light is on? Pastor Josh, I hear you giggling. Because I know you're going to wear them out, Pastor Josh. And you can say, yes. As a matter of fact, I know my light is on. It's a light that shines in darkness. It's a light that no darkness can ever put out. Beloved, this week, let's round up our posse and let's go on a light tour. Hold your phones up one last time. Hallelujah. Oh, I love it. I love it. With your light, your glory. Oh, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. By your presence. 
Come on, Holy Spirit. Come. This is beautiful. Your glory, your glory. Hey, DJ, can you get back in place one more time? To be. No music, holy. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Hold up your light. Your glory, your glory. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be over. To be overcome by your presence. Come on, church. Woo! Come on, Holy Spirit. Send the light. Your presence, your presence, your presence, your presence. Your presence, your presence, your presence. Your presence. Woo! One more time, Holy Spirit, real sweet. continue to play just begin to talk to the Lord for yourself Pastor Danita, Pastor Joshua Pastor David, won't you get in place your presence, your presence It's your presence. Go ahead and worship him. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Oh, it's awfully sweet in here. It's awfully sweet. Your presence. While the instruments are playing, if you're here this morning and you're ready to come into the light, you've been out there in darkness for a while, but you're ready to make Jesus your choice this morning. If you're here this morning, excuse yourself from where you are. Come down this aisle, give me your hand, but most of all, give God your heart. If you're here this morning, you're not saved. Come down this aisle right now. There are pastors at the front waiting to receive you. Excuse yourself from where you are. Come down this aisle. Give me your hand. Give God your heart. God bless your walking, daughter. God bless your walking. 